In a world in crisis, can three idiots find hope in the darkest of places? Will love conquer all, or will hate win out in the end? This is a show called Hate. Welcome to a show called Hakes, a podcast in which we explore love, hakes, and everything in between in search of greater meaning and perhaps a little perspective. I'm John. I'm Nick. I'm Chris. You see, you were posing there with like your mouth kind of just absolutely just like it like a dog's ass, just kind of like yeah. really puckered up. That's what I was going for, actually. Well, I couldn't tell if you had a mouth a mouthful of beer. I did, or, yeah. Or just, or just hot air. But, it, you know, but no, it was beer. Well, it's, it, was a, it was a winning combination of the two, actually. And with, and way, with your new like hairstyle, it was a, a wonderful impression very, of a testicle. It's very generous of you to call it a hairstyle. <laughs> well, Nick, is the, absence, is the absence of art also art? No. No, no. okay. No. Well, <laughs> it's, the cor- it's the correct answer. Or is it? <laughs> yes. You see, your, your recent sudden striking lack of hair mm, i am i am emboldened it's, for, the, <laughs> but for the benefit of the listener well you've now you've now made our hair so much more striking by comparison yeah. we look yeah. amazing now i look like i look like i've just been free from the matrix that y- yes that's actually, true yeah. you do yeah that's and a very you, generous way of saying you're bald yeah. yeah and you turning up naked and covered in slime is appreciated as yeah. well I mean, that's, that's normally. I, I, I wanted. I wanted to go full, you know, cosplay for you. That's. I mean, that's normal for you. But normally, you have hair, and, and normally now, I have hair, and the hair just really gets something. in the way. That's the yeah, problem. Exactly, yeah. yeah, I'll give you. I'll give you bonus points for actually using the word cosplay correctly in a sentence. Well, I, I had to. Th- I had to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if anyone has ever cosplayed as just woken up Neo, and basically they just got a load of like radox. <laughs> they, mu- they must shower have gel. surely. They just surely got a load of like peach flavored radox shower gel. <laughs> They just oh, doused no. their body in it, stuck a few little, uh, little I don't know, like like the feet on the bottom of chair legs, just stuck those all over their body yeah. to be those little nice. plugs, and then shaved their head, doused in Radox, straight to the convention floor, butt naked, just like living the dream. You've just, you've, out of like the depths of my memory, you've just <laughs> dug up something which I think I'd completely forgotten about. Do you remember that craze for like shower gel that had like rough bits in it oh yeah like exfoliating spheres or something oh yeah yeah, yeah i do what's that I was thinking, cool? when you were saying that i was thinking about goldschlager if i'm honest oh yeah yeah it's like the goldschlager of that was, shower gel it was the it was the vodka that came with little flakes of gold or something in it yeah yeah so what the logic being that links shower gel with beads in it was yeah. essentially the same like it lacerates the skin yeah so and, you smell better for longer yeah it's it, the smell is in you now mm. i feel goldschlager was bullshitting to be honest yeah, well, it was gold, it yeah. was a, it was a nice gimmick it was an, an, an expensive at, gimmick you'd imagine an yeah. attempt at decadence but although it was expensive it wasn't like impossible to buy like i remember i, I remember, I remember the first student. time i had goldschlager i must have been probably 18 and i, I remember saying to someone it's not gonna hurt is it <laughs> It's not going to hurt me. I, yeah, you, it's I, yeah. funny. You mentioned like when you were 18, I remember, and your recent haircut. Yeah, well, that what? was the last time I had hair like this. Oh. I, used to, I, I used to cut my hair like this all the time. Did you ever cut it that short? I, I cu- a couple of times. A couple of times I did, yeah. Because I can't, I remember you having like pretty short hair at times in your life, but yeah. this, this this is quite striking. I but this, this is, I mean, I'm 34 now, and it's certainly not been like this since I went to university when I was 18. So What we're seeing here is what looks like a five o'clock shadow on your head. Yeah. And you're saying that's two days of growth from when you yeah. actually did it on Tuesday. That's so correct. So when you did it, was your whole head a pink orb? Ish, yeah. It was, it was a very tiny amount of hair on it, but okay. it grows, my hair does grow pretty quickly. Right, thankfully, because it does look <laughs> fucking awful. It is, it is, it is like you're wearing a, like um, like a piece of like Hollywood latex. It's like you're kind of <laughs> thank you. It's, uh, it's like you're. It's not a compliment. But behind oh. the scenes footage on the DVD, 
Yeah. It's like Star Wars behind the scenes. And this is when they're talking to an actor who's halfway between being transformed into like yeah. Klubu Ginax. The, yeah. I love the... that guy. Oh, I love Ginax. that. I love that guy. Oh, oh yeah. But, he's, 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 Ma he's Max, Re he's Max Rebo's understudy. <laughs> I'll, I'm going to... I'm gonna that's let a star, that. That's a Star Wars reference. Cheers I'm gonna let that fly over my head. Klubu um, Ginax is one of the best. I think you've you've really nailed the naming yeah. convention of Star Wars. There, <laughs> yeah. but they are though, aren't they? It's like you could the name put... it, the, the names in Star Wars are just nonsense words put together to form two nonsense words. Because you could pull yeah, any like Luke Skywalker. Luke Skywalker. <laughs> you could pull any collection of random syllables out of your ass and make yeah. a fake name, but at gunpoint, we could all just come up with a Star Wars name oh, right yeah. now. Yeah. Oh, sure. It's sure. random, but it's random in a particular in yeah. a particular way. Muku Ganga. Yeah, there you that's, go. You that's pretty to, good. You have to say it in that sort of like do 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 sort of tonality, and then it sounds like a Star Wars name. I feel the problem is with that in Attack of the Clones. <laughs> here we here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I'm gonna I'm here gonna go. educate you now. <laughs> Like you so say, as you say, you've got all these weird Star Wars names, and then in Attack of the Clones, Yoda's taking a class of young Jedi, and Obi Wan interrupts him to um, to ask him about uh, the missing star system around Kami where it turns out Kamino is. Ah, and, right. he, and he go and he says to one of the younglings, "I'll oh, get the shade so we can look at this presentation from Obi Wan." Right. And he go he goes, "You're expecting him to say some sort of weird alien name." He, he just goes, "Liam, the shades." <laughs> And that's it's like no, that, he does. Where he does? Where does Liam come from? That's a lie. It's not a lie. Look it up. There's no character in Star Wars called God, Liam. His name, his, na his name was Liam. I'm not. But this joking. is the thing. This is. I've thought about this before with Luke Skywalker. His first name is a Luke. We have all of these wacky names in yeah. the Star Wars universe, and Skywalker takes a lot of the light of, of, of that and makes him sound like he's got a wacky name. But his name is just Luke. His name is Luke. Mm. We've got Leia. We've got Han. We've got. Gribu Zandax, you know, and then we've got Luke. And so Liam, I mean, as weird as it sounds in the context of that universe, there's a precedent. There's a Luke. I mean, his, na his surname's probably like Hufflebutt or something. <laughs> something mental. But like... But it's, I swear to you, 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 dear listener, go and look it up if you don't already know this, which some people I'm sure will. I bet Liam's got a whole series of novels. Like, <laughs> it's gonna... The next... Yeah, it's gonna be... The next spin-off's gonna be Liam, a Star Wars story. <laughs> there's, oh my God. I... <laughs> Oh, I just, yeah, I saw uh, somebody, uh, you know, uh, it's like an AA meeting. Uh, hi, everyone. My name's John. And mm. for the duration of 2021, I've barely been on Twitter. Like, that's my big announcement. Like, Good I'm very you. proud of myself. Good for you. But I popped onto Twitter briefly yesterday and I saw a post from someone who was like a semi-official Star Wars author. Okay. Oh, sure. As which I guess it's like it's like saying you pay taxes. Like I, th I think pretty much everyone has written a Star Wars novel. <laughs> like saying I once point. I once breathed in oxygen and exhaled carbon dioxide. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah. Um, and um, it was like you know the author of you know the rise of Kylo Ren or mm. and it just struck me that like taking a bullshit name from Star Wars and putting the rise of <laughs> in front of yeah. it, it, it's like an AI came up with this stuff it's like that's that's not a real book even if you handed but me that is. book i would not believe it was a real book it's like it's like those those things people do with algorithms and it's um there was one it was louis theroux narrations and they put in every word louis theroux's ever said on the telly and they ran it through an algorithm and then came up with all these various narrations and he ended up doing loads of them on twitter which is quite funny <laughs> yeah i do i sometimes see like you'll see like a, a novel's won a prize like uh, it's what it's won some you know literary prize or whatever and then you check the title and it's like you know the the bride of leia or whatever and it's like mm. oh it's a star wars book oh um <laughs> it's not real that's weird that it won an award <laughs> though <laughs> like you they those those novels i've always just thought are just like they're kind of just churned out aren't they just to like give give the the hardcore fans just something more to read about it's correct me it's if I'm people, wrong. It's but... to give people something to argue about on the internet. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Uh, well, yeah, actu actually, in the novelization of uh, <laughs> the the Bride of Chewbacca, um, <laughs> I think you'll actually find the Wookiee's hair was seven and point three inches long and no longer. This, and and uh, I don't know it, if that's I'm making that up. I don't know. Like I, I swear, I come swear, at, come at me, Wookiee fans. <laughs> I swear, this isn't even my hate for the episode. I I just it really bugs me 
the endless kind of space filling nature of the star wars franchise I, like liam like we joke about it it's only a matter of time until there is a bl- the saga a fucking of liam. novel yeah the rise of liam the rise of liam so i'm going to drop some more knowledge on you there we go recently you know the kid in revenge of the sith it goes master skywalker there are too many of them what are we going to do no. when does that happen that happens when anakin slaughters the children for no oh, no, no, no 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 the young the, the younglings oh the younglings so you can't say slaughter children can you? <laughs> um anyway so anakin slaughters the children so it's yeah. the darkest uh, it's the darkest of the trilogy and, yeah it's the it's dark it's requels um so he's the kid that says that and then anakin goes and kills him and, and killed him okay off off screen obviously, obviously. um yeah, and they're now it, they're now interviewing that kid that kid's been like interviewed recently and he was like oh yeah uh, the reason we jumped in that scene is because hayden christensen said boo and we weren't expecting it and it's like wow that's so fascinating We've got to look behind the curtain. They are scraping the bottom so, of the barrel. So he, he this, this kid is now being paid to be interviewed by media. And, and what he, he's and like, he, and that's one of the now. worst delivered lines I've seen in any movie. <laughs> but that that's <laughs> Liam, is it not? No, Liam. Liam was a little shithead in the second one. Is Liam what? killed? Do we know that Liam is definitely killed by Anakin? I would imagine so, unless he is Grogu. But <laughs> but like, it, presumably it happened. We didn't see Liam's body. I guess what I'm saying is, is that I think this could be. No, my... I, I'm not sure there was. I'm not sure there was much call for that. Was there, this could really? be my novel? I'm just saying this could be my one. I want this to be my novel, The Rise of Liam. You see, I admire your ambition, but Thanks. you think you're thinking too small. Oh shit! You know, you say novel, I see young adult series. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the Liam saga, the, the Liam. Liam Chronicles. <laughs> Chronicles of Liam. <laughs> the Liam. I think I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I got that name right. I'm going to look it up while we're talking. I'm, I'm Li- almost certain I, that's what he said. The Liam he Chronicles. He certainly said a gen- general name. Subtitle. A st- right, I'm typing it in A now. Star Wars exploitation. Look, there you go. There's Liam. Liam has got an, his own Wikipedia page. No, he oh doesn't. Oh my yes, he does. God. And it's just called Liam. No. And the only thing we know about Liam is Here that is. Yoda told him to close for blind. He's, he's got his own... <laughs> He's got his own biography. No, he doesn't. Yes, he does. No, he, he doesn't. doesn't. Right, no, he doesn't. It says here, Liam. Right, here we go. Here we go. Just enabling the... this bullshit. So on, this isn't on, real. On Wikipedia, everyone has like a quote at the top. Great. Like to represent something about their character. And the quote <laughs> at the top of Liam's page is, Liam, the shades. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and it just makes sure that's, uh, uh, that's attributed to Yoda there. And it's, the description Good. is, Liam, Liam was a force-sensitive human male Jedi youngling who trained in the Jedi Temple on Coruscant during the Separatist Crisis. He was trained by Yoda, the Grand Master of the Jedi Order. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh he closed for shakes? What? He was, he was part of the Famously. Bear Clan, a class of younglings trained no. by Jedi Master Yoda. No, he during wasn't. During a session no. in which the younglings trained to use a lightsaber... No. Jedi Knight Obi Wan Kenobi inquired to Yoda regarding the location of the planet Kamino. You're still lying. Why, not, you why lying? would I make this up? Which he could not find in the Jedi archives. Kenobi displayed a map of the galaxy in the training room, and Yoda requested that Liam lower the shades. <laughs> he did so, and the room darkened so the map could be viewed. <gasps> wow, Liam did that. Fuck him up. Liam did it with his mind. So I'm not no, making didn't. that. I did. I did not misremember that, and I did not. I can we distress lie. that Yoda? A Jedi Grandmaster was incapable of closing the blinds yeah. <laughs> with his amazing mind. He can manipulate the the world around him without interacting with it physically. He can make things float and move with his mind. And yet he couldn't... I mean, maybe he wanted to give Liam something to do. So next time you watch Attack of the Clones, not that you would, um, just think about the sacrifices that Liam ultimately made. We never even see Liam, do we? We don't know what Liam Do we actually like. see him? Yes, is he, we see him. We is see he in him. shot? He's in shot and he closes the shades. Wait, we there... actually see him close we the shades. We see him close the shades because you've got on to the fill Wikipedia... the time up with something. On the Wikipedia article, is there a picture of him? There is, yeah. <laughs> and there's, there's, actually, a... there's actually a YouTube clip that lasts two seconds and it just says, Liam, the shades. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That this means... is great. This is he's... great. Apparently, apparently his name is a reference to Liam Neeson. Who portrayed the character Qui Gon Jinn? You may remember in the 1999 film Star Wars, Episode One: The Phantom no, Menace. No, I'm sorry. Like making a movie two years later and just having a character with the same name as the actor. Yeah, like, that's yeah. not a callback. His like, hair, his hair color was brown. His eye color was brown, 
And he was born in in between the years 30 BBY and 26 BBY. That which of means course sta- nothing. What does BBY stand for? B- uh, big big baby Yoda. No, incorrect. Oh. But a but a good guess. Oh, no, thanks. Uh, it stands for before the Battle of Yavin. Oh, uh, Yavin. I've heard what, of Yavin. What happened on Yavin? Yavin was the end of A New Hope. Why where, they, where they blew up the Death Star <laughs> as it was orbiting Yavin. That's Yavin. right. Yeah. Wait, so who started counting? Oh, I don't know. Don't start asking date. questions like that. Here's the thing, right? Liam, um, I imagine, on screen, probably is about six or seven pixels. Like, really, in the grand scheme of things. He's probably sure. very small in shot. How do they know his eye colour? <laughs> Yeah, and also, oh, wait, knows, sorry. Who knows? Some thing is, someone's poured over the footage, the limited footage we have of Liam, <laughs> and and put that page together. Computer, Someone enhance. Like, um, wait, sorry, wait, wait, when when did Liam live? What what was the date of his life? So he was born <laughs> either thirty years before the Battle of Yavin or twenty six years, or somewhere in between that margin. Okay. And presu- so. Presumably, he died a couple of years later when Anakin killed all the children, younglings. So. Okay, so how old how old do you reckon Liam was? I reckon in in this photo he's maybe eight or nine. Eight or nine. So does Somewhere. that mean Luke Skywalker is meant to be like eighteen to twenty two or something? At... Yeah, Luke in the in A New Hope is about twenty one, I think. Okay. A lot went downhill. It all went to in shit twenty in the years, really. didn't it? Yeah. Well, the way... Oh, don't. Let's not start this. We'll, we'll, be, we'll be here all night. I could... Honestly, we could go on about this all night. Let's, let's leave it at Liam the Shades and okay. move on. Okay. I don't... What, yeah, and I just like... I don't want to be... It's like, if you love it, if you love it, I'm so happy for you. You know, if you feel compelled to go write the life story of Liam... Oh, I'm on it. ...on a wiki page, like, I'm so happy for you. Isn't it at amazing that I just time. mentioned that Jen mentioned this in passing and it's taken up 15 minutes of our lives? Welcome but, to the podcast. <laughs> yeah, well, welcome to a show called Hey. But, 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 I'm so, but the thing I just can't get over is like, I, like as someone who has suffered for being a nerd in their life, mm. I still want to steal these people's lunches. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I just want to beat the shit out of them. And, and I don't know why. And it's you're like, right to do so, John. It's like, it's like, it's like they're still further to fall. You know, and I, I think when, Luckily, when you, yeah, 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 when you've been a sad nerd in your teenage years and you've been bullied, I think you see these people and you're like, finally, <laughs> now, <laughs> this is my moment. <laughs> I have the higher ground, you might say. <laughs> I get that reference. Well, hey, uh, here we go. Oh, great stuff. Anyhow, who, who, who's got a lo- who's got a hate rather? Got who's a got hate? A hate? Nick's oh, got hate. Nick's got hate. Nick's I want to jump hate. in here because because Chris mentioned algorithms earlier, I did. and and my my hate relates to algorithms. So Wonderful. out out there in the world, there is a website, and and this website generates the most terrifying monsters that will haunt your dreams forever. And this website is called that no wait this person doesn't exist dot com. Oh. oh no, I'm already right. scared. I don't yeah. like this. And what this is, if you load up that site, and I said I, I, I would encourage all of our listeners to at some point, maybe now or after the show, to load up thispersondoesnexist.com, what they will see is a photo of a person. And to all intents and purposes, they look exactly like a real person that you might have seen a photo of. But what's key is that there's a clever AI algorithm thing that is scouring the internet, learning what human faces look like, and creating new people out of that data and that knowledge and that cleverness, right? And then it loads this photo photo i say photo in inverted commas because this person appears that looks like a photo but they're not real that's not a photo of anyone it, this this ai has created it hence this person doesn't exist dot com mm. now that in itself is pretty cool uh and at first when i saw this discovered this site i was eagerly refreshing the page because all it is is just show a person you have to so refresh it's just it a to picture of just a person that doesn't exist that's it just a person Okay. But as you start to refresh the page and it loads them freshly, brand new for they you. They come to life. <laughs> oh God, I hope not. Um, you start to realise that there are some very weird artefacts in some of these pictures. Uh-oh. Oh no. Because the Uh-oh. AI the AI oh, is designed no. to create people's faces, but it doesn't really understand backgrounds or clothes. And so it treats those as a sort of secondary thing. Oh, it doesn't matter because all people are going to be looking at are the people's faces in the middle. But that's not true. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> because sometimes okay. the the pictures that it's using to build these new people that don't exist, some of these pictures it's calling on have other people in the background. Really? And those, are, they re- are they real people? Well, you never, 
what it does is it sort of takes data and it sort of modges it into what it thinks might be the background for this new picture that it's creating. But the problem is, if it's pulling data from a picture that had people in the background, then those people get twisted horribly oh. because the algorithm is only focusing on the face in the middle. It's not thinking about the background in the same way as a human face. So these people end up looking so horrifying oh, no. that I actually start to feel sick. And I, that's, that is no word of an exaggeration. But do they, do they look like people or do they just look like monsters? They, they kind of, so there'll be an eye and there'll be a oh. mouth, but they won't necessarily be in the right place. Oh. And there'll be what looks like scar tissue running from a mouth up to an eye but, but up to presumably the that, but Presumably that's deliberate though. No, this is accidental because the, the algorithm is oh. only focusing on the face in the middle to trying to create this like person that doesn't exist gimmick, which is kind of cool. And it does a really good job of the face in the middle of the frame, but all around the edge, because it's treating that as background, if it's pulling data for the background that's got people in it, it modges those people up because it doesn't understand that they're people and they get horrifyingly distorted. And it's honestly, I cannot stress enough how terrifying it is. And what's the scariest thing is that inevitably when you load this person doesn't exist.com for the first time, you'll probably see a fairly normal person. And it will take a few refreshes before people mm. in the background start to appear. Oh, and God. Uh, and then and then yeah, your dreams are fucked basically for forever. See, I'm compelled to look at this now, but I I mustn't. <laughs> <laughs> you, you must yeah. Oh God, yeah. It's funny, even just like the way you're describing it is creeping me out. Like, yeah, I wonder yeah. if it's somehow scarier than the real thing at this point. It reminds me of. Do you remember those things where people was like, hey, hey. Hey, look at this uh, picture of a room. I bet you can't see the ghost. And then you look and at it, it would and go, you look bah! staring, and then it goes, bah! and it's like, yeah. oh, why have you sent me that? Why you have fucker. you sent me that? Yeah, why'd you do that? And I regret I regret punching them now. But This is, <laughs> <laughs> this is the thing, is that I can't look away. Like, um, I've, I've collected a few of the worst, and Brilliant. depending on what you guys I think... Feel, I, I feel like we're going to... You've we're saved gonna, them. We're going to yeah. have to see some of these, I feel well, like. Well, I haven't got them on me right now, sadly. I oh, can't oh, what a shame. I can't share them with you now, but what I thought I might do is share them on the show called Hate Page, and we can all enjoy them. Oh, know? wonderful. That sounds yeah. What a tremendous. great idea. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, they, um, they, they're the kind of things that you, like, you look at, you go, oh, I never want to see anything like that ever again. And then, and then someone goes, oh, I've loaded another one. Oh, it's, this, is, this was happening with Ali. Ali was on the page earlier and she was just refreshing it. And she's like, oh no, there's another one. And I can't help but go and I have to go check this out and yeah, see how monstrous problem. this is. Yeah. I, it's funny you mentioned, maybe like um, there's something in the air right now because mm. with like weird algorithmic. Apparently there is thing. literally something in the air, which is why we must all stay indoors. <laughs> But we fed a thousand viruses. Oh no! Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, I, I saw something today, and it was uh, they trained an algorithm to recreate oil paintings. Oh yes, so, I've seen some of these as right. well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like you see it, and of course it's a painting, so it's not trying to be a real life photo. No. But it was still creepy as hell. Yeah. Because it. it it, it looked like it had drawn a person, but it just got kind of like scrambled around the face. And it looked like a really good painting. Like if someone had painted that, I'd be like, Jesus Christ, that's a really Like an scary... abstract sort of thing. Yeah. yeah, it's a really creepy, scary painting you've drawn. But of course it's not. It's just, it's a computer doing what but it thinks is right. Presumably someone must have fed the algorithm and images slash yeah. pictures of people into this algorithm. So they must be partly responsible. <laughs> They're the At people least. we can find and punch. Yeah, I they're guess. the people we can ultimately uh, try and uh, send down in court. Yeah. The, the weird the, thing is, is that it, it, it's like, it is really, really good at faces. And by faces, I mean the point, like your eyebrows round to the, your bottom lip, that center section of a human head. It's really okay. good at that. And then when we go out from there, ears, ears are often a massive question mark with this. Sometimes it'll <laughs> nail an ear. Sometimes an ear will look like, a sort of hastily stitched wound, sure. um, which is honestly the best description I can come up with. Sometimes it looks like a boiled jackfruit. <laughs> I, like, yeah. I like that it's not even well stitched. It's no, hastily stitched. Hastily stitched. And then other times, like hairlines of people will be wild as fuck because obviously it's pulling on images. Some people have fringes. Some people have pulled back hair. Some people mm. have side partings. So it's trying to make an approximation 
out of those. And it doesn't understand the fact that people have hairlines and hairstyles. It's not that clever. So it just kind of creates this weird hairline. And sometimes there'll be like a bit of bald head that just goes way up onto their scalp, which doesn't make any sense at all. What's that like? Yeah, who'd know, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. And like, can you imagine living yeah. like that? Yeah, it'd be, it'd be disgusting. <laughs> yeah. Ugh, yeah, it's unsettling, isn't it? It's very unsettling. And I guess it's that uncanny valley thing, isn't it? Like, we know faces so well that when we see a fucked face, it really, like, sets us off, like... And I, I think I think I shared it privately, you know, because we, we talk occasionally. We occasionally, not, yeah, we do occasionally when talk we're not off, recording off a show. Um, and some guy said, the fact that humans find the uncanny valley so unsettling suggests that there is an evolutionary advantage <laughs> for humans being able to recognise something which is very nearly human. Oh, my God. Yes. But isn't. <laughs> What the fuck did we face in our past? <laughs> elves, man. I'm you. <laughs> it's yeah. elves. I mean, that's a weird thing. Like, there was a point in human history where Homo sapiens coexisted with mm. other types of human. Like, that's mad. And we ate them. We ate them all. We probably did. Yeah, not Delicious. a good, not a good start to uh, the evolutionary high ground. <laughs> 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 but we also developed haikus, so I guess we kind of I guess it that all balances, balances out. out. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Now, Nick, as 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 an artist, as a, as a very you know talented artist, oh, um, thanks, John. I can imagine that uh, having to come up with new and unique faces for characters is challenging. So sure. maybe like an AI doing some of the heavy lifting would be would be appreciated. Yeah, I suppose so. Like, I guess you could see it as um, a reference drawing from life, except for the fact that this isn't alive and shouldn't be alive. And I hate the fact that it looks like it's alive and I want it to be dead. <laughs> and you're referencing it like you're shaking and vomiting and shitting constantly. <laughs> you have like two seconds of clarity to kind of learn something. I think the worst thing is that because these characters, characters, these these monsters, let's just call them what they are, these well, monsters, yeah. let's be they're always about it. they're always in the background because it's the background faces that it doesn't understand and it does it's treating like background and so it's creating this sort of modged face and as a result they look like they're peering over the shoulder of the the main person in the middle of the photo or peering from the edge of the frame so you'll get half of a oh face like just one eye a bit of the nose and the mouth. But they're, they're not in the right place. The mouth is too far down. The eye is bloodshot entirely. And the, the eyebrow is cutting into the flesh of the eye. And it's like, what? What? Oh, it's... it's oh, can it's the, can the person behind this not make adjustments? Or is the algorithm just so out of control now that it can't be done? <laughs> well, the point is, it's meant to be automated. You just kind of turn it on and let it let it go. Well, if, I someone, think if someone was manually curating... That, sound, that sounds like a very dangerous game. Yeah. I mean, you could. That's obviously these things have rules, which is how they're able to do what they can do well, as well as they do, because like they have these rules that they follow. And I feel like there should be a rule in there which is like, just fuck off with those <laughs> with those monster guys, though. That should be one of the little, just a bit of code, you know, just like you know, c colon forward slash, just fuck off, monsters. Yeah. But for example. Is, but this is surely how the AI will learn. Like, if it just faxes out all the images that make people kind of cry, <laughs> or kind of like. <laughs> just uncontrollably shit themselves they... but it needs it needs a way like basically what this site needs is a way for me to tell the ai no you done goofed there so oh. so like they needs to be a i'm crying button on each image and when when one of these horrifying monsters is summoned into the background i can press the i'm <laughs> crying button and the ai goes oh i goofed here let's find out why and after a while it'll learn to not f spawn the monsters yeah okay it's an interesting theory. <laughs> it's interesting because clearly, like, coming up with faces is genuinely very hard. Like, you know, mm. I, I uh, you know, uh, Nick, you'll probably appreciate this more than uh, Chris Ray. Thank you. Because um, I, I, imagine, I imagine Chris Ray's Instagram is nothing but wholesome memes about football. Whereas, um, um, yes. <laughs> I think about it, but yes. Whereas in... I, I, I've occasionally seen, I'm getting more of them now, little Instagram posts which are one slide art tips. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I get these, yeah. And they're yeah. so boiled down and simplistic that they're nigh on useless. Yeah. And this one was like, how to draw interesting faces. And okay. it's like, step one. And it's like, try altering the eyes, ears, mouth and nose. That's oh, like wow. step one. That's radical. 
Oh, 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 and if that doesn't work, step two, alter everything else. <laughs> like, or just start again. So basically, yeah. what you're saying is, if you want to create a face that looks like a different to the face that you've drawn before, try changing something. Change everything. Why Change not? Change everything. Yeah. Like, don't draw eyes. Yeah. That's your answer to everything. Yeah, that's your answer to everything. Um, yeah, I see those, and I get ones like I saw one the other day. I think it was today actually, and it was um, how to get elbows right. And there was like one drawing of a of a, an elbow, and it was like big red X, no. And then another drawing of an elbow, big green tick, yes. And I was like, the bad one's fine though. It's fine. Like to, you're scraping the bottom of the barrel here to try and find an art tip for me. But seriously, just it's fine. It's an elbow. It's fine. But they are like, all of those art tips are very much like, you know, it's the old joke, how to draw a person. Yeah. And it's like, step one, draw a vertical line and a horizontal line. Step two, draw the person. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it, um, it's, it's just useless. I do so, feel yeah. most of these art tips are artists flexing. That's literally all it is. They want people to comment below. <laughs> Whoa, you're so amazing at drawing elbows. Oh my god. That's the only reason anyone does anything ever on social media though. Oh my god, yeah. what an interesting point. Oh, what a what a fantastic uh, poo, I don't know. I thought you were going to say <laughs> that's the only reason artists do anything and I was going to agree well, with you. Well, it's the only <laughs> reason anyone does anything is for the, the, the praise of their peers. Mm -hmm. What's the only reason I do this podcast? It's true actually. Yeah, me too. I don't let me know. Show. Let me know when the praise begins. Yeah. That would be... it's been a, it's been a long, long haul. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thinking back, I just remembered about a year ago there was some AI doing the rounds, and I've forgotten what it was because it was kind of cool. But it was uh, it was text based. Okay. You, you go to this like quite shitty looking website. There wasn't much kind of wasn't much kind of going on, um, but you'd kind of. Um, You'd write a sentence in this little box, and right. then you press press the magic button, and it would continue. Oh, like it, it would continue writing, uh, in like the same style and theme. That's pretty so, radical. So I put in, for example, a uh, a classic uh, a classic John Locke sentence, which is uh, bloody uh, long. <laughs> yes indeed yeah uh you know uh it was uh jack fortune was a con artist who died and discovered an afterlife in chaos and i i press it and it generated like three or four paragraphs of kind of nonsense okay but like it made sense if you know what i mean were you concerned because it was better than the script you <laughs> well it wasn't bad that that's that's the thing like it was it was passable yeah it was very passable and if they take one of these algorithms and they upload it into one of these Boston Dynamics sexy dancing robots they're building, mm. you know, yeah. we're in, then we're we're in real trouble. Then we're really screwed. Because the Boston Dynamics robots will load onto their face screens. They'll load a, a human face that, of a person that doesn't exist. And then I'll throw up the instant I see it. Yeah. And they'll have won. There is a... Oh, actually, no. Hang on, Chris. Chris. Uh, Chris Ray. Yes. You, you are. Uh, you're a man of man of the people. Yes, I'd say so. Uh, kind of salt of the earth. Um, mm, mm. Basically, mm. you're my barometer for you know what the common man is 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 thinking at any yeah. one point. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Um, sure. Let's go with that. How, how familiar are you, uh, Chris Ray, with uh, the concept of um, kind of Twitch and streaming? The fuck really? are you talking about, John? Well. <laughs> Okay, well, no, I whereas... know, I, 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 I don't know what Twitch is. Honestly, I don't know what Twitch is. Okay, well, okay. Whereas, whereas in a previous age, um, you know, uh, younger folk would have been sent down the mine, mm. uh, you know, to 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 haul precious ores out of the earth and kill canaries. Mm. Um, yeah, indeed. Now, nowadays, um, they they go on Twitch, sure, and they uh, Twitch is a streaming service, a oh. live streaming service. How wonderful. And you might uh, film yourself playing a video game. Oh, for Jesus example, Christ! Which, uh, <laughs> which you are quite good at. Uh, and other and, people and... will watch you play it, and sometimes throw money at you. I'm yes, familiar and, uh... with the concept because I know that they do it um, for FIFA. There we go. <laughs> there, we go. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Got uh, it. So I'm, for, I'm not, I'm not completely unfamiliar with the concept. I've never heard of Twitch. Okay, well, it's, I, it's... I, I, I understand what you're, you're referring okay, to. So like it's YouTube a, for streaming. It's sure. a platform that does just that basically oh, i understand so there's a new trend nick mm. might be aware of this where you can get 
uh, like a program, like a some bit of software, which will, fi- while you're filming yourself doing your thing, ah, uh. it will superimpose uh, a cartoon character oh. over you. Why? Well, so that you in- look like the so you character. look like a cartoon character. Why? Well, M- that's no one's asking that question. No, which that's is why not we're the here. Qu- no, get so out. It looks, like, not... <laughs> it looks not... like the cartoon character is playing the video game. It kind of looks like there's yeah. a live, you're filming a cartoon character live, which in some respects is kind of remarkable, but it's also a way to maintain the person's anonymity and to have a well, sort of style. I've got a better look. way. I've got a better way to maintain your anonymity. Tell don't me. on the fucking internet. Oh. I don't think that's really a concern. That's not an option here. No. People oh. want it. They want to be seen. They want to be, be, be seen, seen, but not seen. They don't want to be seen. But they do they want, want to be they seen. Want to be, oh, I, so I understand. Okay, per- okay so, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. So, so the idea when it began was people like video games, right? Right. People yes, maybe don't apparently. have the time to play a lot of video games, but they yeah. enjoy that good feeling of when you'd have a few mates over and we'd mm. all sit down and play a video game together. Yes. I live alone. I can't do that. So why don't I watch someone else playing a video game? Hmm. And and you can chat, you know, you can go in. Okay, all right. Chat. So there, there's a live like conversational. Element there's interactivity going on, sure. definitely. Okay. Yeah, and you know, uh, I, I, Lucy and I, we watch a lot of people doing it. It's surprisingly entertaining. Mm. It's, See, it's I a... actually prefer because I can't play video games, as I may have mentioned before, on this podcast. I do quite enjoy watching other people play video games. There we go. Yes, indeed. There you go. See, ex- there's but there's not someone I don't know. Oh. No, no, but you might though. You might end up, you know, the more you watch a person, you might come to know them, and you might. Consider well, them. all right. I accept. I accept the hypothesis. They okay. will often chat while they're playing. They might sort of talk about, you know, their thoughts and feelings and emotions. Okay. But then, uh, you know, and maybe Nick can back me up on this. There has been a developing trend over time mm. of. Like, I'm filming myself, and people seem to enjoy me kind of just being here. So, I guess I'm going to just be a little sexy. Oh, God. Like, yeah. like, like a modicum. What's a, what's a little sexy? Like maybe, as in, maybe as take in it's your top not. Off. Well, what are we talking about here? Are we talking about <laughs> du- dudes or, or gals? Everyone, Both. everyone. Just young, young, beautiful people. Yeah. They'll maybe just, you know, flash a bit of skin. Or yeah, dress, it's a, not... dress a little suggest. They can't be outright, you know. They never cross that line because the problem they'd be, they'd be kicked this, off the platform. The problem with this is, and here Tell we me. go. Tell I'm me, gonna, I'm going to learn you something big. Um, <laughs> there are places you can go for that kind of thing. What? There are like it's all about co- compartmentalizing the internet. You don't want to make everything the same. You don't want to make everything porn. Because eventually you'll be watching pornography and they're playing video games. And <laughs> well, that, and that's a side issue. That's a sidebar of pornography. But then you've got people playing video games and they do a little bit of pornography on the side. I would and wager everything, that's but everything happened. becomes the same. That's the problem. You've got to compartmentalize. Whenever we talk to Shrey and we try to explain some horrible new trend in 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 the internet, it's like uh, it's like uh, you're the child at the town hall meeting who stands mm. up and just says like some utter, just earth shattering truth, which just kind of like. Yeah silences the room i mean you're right chris ray it would be wrong for everything to just slowly become porn but it gra- it's, it happens <laughs> gradually over time to the point where you don't really notice what's happening anymore yeah, i suppose yeah. so so now so on top of that where it's like i'm gonna i'm gonna tune in today and watch uh, my favorite streamer play fifa for example mm, sure you yeah. might also go there's always things where it's definitely not porn it's not porn it's not but porn. i might i might tune in today and watch somebody i don't know do something kind of wholesome, but also feels a little weird. It right. might be like, um, oh, I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tune in and watch somebody just shelling eggs, like doing nothing but shelling eggs. What on like, Twitch? Or, or you know, something weird like that. Like, it's not. There's nothing inherently wrong about it. That sounds, it just seems, that sounds like my idea of hell, actually. It just seems kind of weirdly odd that I'm watching someone just shell eggs, hard-boiled eggs, for like eight hours. Honestly, yeah. I can't stand that. I so d- now I've, I'm, I've already identified many times on this podcast that I do not like eggs. So now imagine, on top of that, if it's, if it's all that egg-shelling magic that you love, you mm. know, that you tune in and you pay big money for. Big time. But now you've got an, you've got an AI algorithm, which is copying pasting a sexy 
cartoon girl over the top of you. Right. So that matches all your body movements perfectly. Sure. But do you give them permission to do that? You're doing it. Oh. You're, you, you actually, you're in complete but control do I know, of this. But do, I know, but do I know about the cartoon overlay? Yeah, you'll do, that's my point. Oh, you're, I see. Okay. You're, you're so doing it, yeah. Imagine it like a mask. Imagine like you're putting a mask on okay. to play a character, but in this case, the mask is virtual and it only appears over your video output. And it's sexy. And it's a bit sexy, yeah. It's a, a little sexy. sexy. It always yeah. walks that line. Not, not very sexy. sexy. Maybe there's Not... a bit of cleavage. Maybe you got okay. your peck out. Maybe one peck is out. Maybe. Maybe two pecks are out. Yeah. That's the thing about being <laughs> and in boy. three And in three years, where where will we be? Oh, it's a slippery slope for sure. But that's, I think the internet the is problem. a slippery show. <laughs> I think we what? are halfway down that slope. And we yeah, are I, I, I feel like eventually we're just going to have to climb on board with all this. Well, it's yeah. like Nick, Nick, you know, Nick opened the door with his, these people do not exist. And at least they kind of look like real people. Kind of. But, you know, we've got we've got walking, talking cartoon characters kind of shelling walnuts or whatever. <laughs> you know? I don't know, it seems like a waste of the Internet to me. There's um there's a filter on TikTok, I believe. Here we go. Let's get it onto TikTok, um, which is exactly that. It turns you into a Pixar character. So, you know, the sort of big eyed, softly skinned, soft focus, beautiful characters that Pixar like to make. I just uh, no. at the moment I look like Gru, so I don't need to know what I look, would look like. <laughs> Not a Pixar character, though. So. Is he not? Right, whatever. Uh, you failed. Uh, but yeah, uh, the world is weird, and uh, I hate it here. <laughs> yeah, it's an awful place. <laughs> um, I've got, I've got a hate. Oh, oh yeah. my goodness me! I hate it in cartoons and kids' movies when oh. you see a nipple. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm terribly sorry about that. I hate it in cartoons and kid movies and kid TV shows where a character has to sing for some reason. Mm. Okay. And they sing like a proper pop star. Okay. Well, let would, me you, would you rather they sang averagely? No. That's, well, yes. But Badly. let me let me elaborate. Uh, imagine you're watching. Um, let's let's dream up a hypothetical cartoon here. It's um Conquer it's Jocks. <laughs> based on it's, based on a previous format. Okay, it's con it's Conquer Jocks. It's Conquer Jocks, right? And uh it's a heartwarming uh kind of kids cartoon about a bunch of conkers living sure. in a tree and they have just heartwarming little adventures. Nothing more daring than oh I don't know Uncle Uncle Horsey uh, has you know, because horse chestnuts. Uncle Horsey. No, I, no I, I understood the reference. Thank you. Well, maybe you didn't laugh, so I thought I'd explain it. <laughs> no, uh, no, I did not. So, so like, Uncle right. Horsey has lost his glasses. Okay. Like, that's oh, the biggest, shit. like, level of threat we're dealing with. Okay, so great. Super simple, charming Kiggs cartoon. And then there will be an episode. There will be an episode where it's like there's a talent show. Okay. You know what? It, you, you get where I'm coming from here. There's going to be a talent show. And <laughs> little Conky. <laughs> conky <Again>. Conker. <laughs> little, uh. little Conky. He's very shy. You know. Very shy. He, does, he doesn't quite have the courage to um to sing at the talent show. And he's and probably he's got a voice like this as well, yeah. hasn't he? And he's being bullied by, by the fat conks who are like, they're the two bullies. This, right, this writes itself, this fool. Yeah, they really they, does. They write themselves, yeah. And <laughs> and little Conky, God, he's so shy. Yes. He's so shy, bless so him. Shy. And as Nick said, he talks a little bit like this, you know. Yeah. And then all the village elders come together, and there's a bit of peril. And at the end, they they like um, they inspire him, and they go, "Come on, little Conky, you can do it." And he gets up on stage, and he's in front of the mic, and he's nervous, and the crowd are like cheering. And then he steps up to the mic, and the moment he grabs that mic. The voice actor changes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And suddenly he's not like, oh, I'm little conky. It's Jason Derulo. <laughs> and he sings. <laughs> and he just. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he just lets rip and just. I Oh, my God. It's like. Simba and the I... Lion King is probably the worst example, or one of the worst examples of this, because his voice is clearly Matthew Broderick. 
And then when he starts singing, it's clearly someone else. It's def- yeah. It's not was Matthew that, Broderick. Was that Matthew Broderick? Matthew Broderick is the adult Simba, yeah. Is that like? Really? I did not yeah. know that. I, did, I didn't know that. It's the correct mm, answer. Remarkable. Circle gets the square. I remember hearing something interesting. This is something that Disney movies used to do back in the day. Is that you're absolutely right, John. They would have a voice like speaking actor and then they would have a singing actor and of course disney animated films are famous for having quite a lot of songs and although theirs wouldn't be quite so blatant as what you're saying here there would definitely be a shift between the voice that you heard talking and the voice that you heard singing um but what would often happen on the official soundtracks is that the voice artist would then have a shot to sing the most oh, famous no. song from the soundtrack and it would always, without fail, be shit. <laughs> and it's like, that's why you didn't sing it. <laughs> but would you but would you prefer in that's let's say that's a plausible scenario that you've come up with there, John, that the conker's about to sing, and then and then he sings and all the townsfolk go wild and they're like, really Oh, oh yeah. my oh my god, that's the best Fuck. conker singing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> it would be. But yeah. and, but you and the audience are going, that was shit. That was bad. That wasn't very good at all. Yeah, what are these conkers yeah. thinking? <laughs> well, I'd like to believe that I suspended a degree of disbelief when I when I entered this world of talking conkers. Sure, but sure. a bit. But I feel like if it's a talent show and your character is a child conker, an anthropomorphic conker, I I would youngling, a, yeah, a, a spikeling. I would not <laughs> be. Very good. I would not be angry. Liam the Shades. I would not be angry if that child stood up and sang like a child mm. at a talent show. But then you but then you can't win a talent contest if you sing like an average child. Because children, and here's the dirty little just... secret, are shit at everything. We need to <laughs> teach these children. My point is... A child like... can improve, but initially is shit at everything. No, my point is, my point is, it's not necessarily that say for example in the disney example it's not necessarily the issue that they have a proper singing voice artist mm, that's not sure. not the issue the issue is that in a post x factor world sure it's not enough that they have to sing properly they have to sing in a modern hip way even if it doesn't suit the stylings of the world Maybe a all? bit of auto tune in there, you know. Yes, oh, yeah, exactly. There's an, ep there's an episode of The Simpsons where Bar uh, Nelson, um, Milhouse, and I think of uh, someone else, former boy band, else. Ralph, maybe become a boy band, and they play play on that, and they they basically give them voice boxes, so they sound yeah. just completely different when they actually yeah, yeah. sing. My point is, like, if you had something like, um, okay, uh, Postman Postman Pat mm. or something like that, sure. So. So, uh, for anyone who's not, you know, in the UK, Postman Pat, it's uh, he's a postman called Pat. It's not. I mean, it's not difficult to explain. <laughs> My point is, it's a pretty old school style kids program. Very twee. Yeah, twee. Exactly. It's cute. Uh, it's not hip. It's no, not down. It's still very, it's still very popular with the children, though. I think he's, I think he's had a CGI upgrade these days. I think well, he it, has, yeah. it is because it is timeless, is what I'm saying. Mm. But it seems like the moment they get, well, they're like, okay, this show isn't meant to be cool. No. It's just meant to be a show for kids, you know. But the moment, the moment they're like, oh, someone's got to sing. And you guarantee, <laughs> you guarantee that like, um, uh, you know, the one, the one member of the village who's going to stand up and sing. Um, they're not going to sing in a way which is in keeping with the style of that world. Because this is like an edgy 2020 reboot they're gonna sing like um you know, worst example ever but like christina aguilera you know yeah. they're gonna be like you know it's that... gonna be modern it's very, very pitchy very pitchy sort yes. of voice yeah because like all anyone can think of is like the x factor or britain's got talent or whatever and it's like and that's they're like how do we bring how do we bring that how can vital we jam kind of, that in yeah how I do we bring that vital i do agree with you because i've seen this before market. And I think it's like, it's jarring with the subject matter, isn't it? It's like, okay, this character's got to sing, but taking the Postman Pat context, it could be this charming little folk song, you know, like dancing around the mulberry tree or whatever. I don't know. Mm. But instead it's like, like, I don't know, my cousin's really hot or something. And it's like, what are you singing <laughs> about? You? Oh, God. 
<laughs> it'd be like it'd be like no it'd be like Norman, the naughty kid from Fireman yeah. Sam. He was a little sc- shit, he was. Standing up at the talent show. Fucking hated him. And singing blurred lines by Robin <laughs> 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 but with Robin, with Robin Thicke doing the voice. Yeah, yeah no, exactly. Yes, yeah. Nobody wants to see that. He nobody was a, he was a wretched little shit when he Norman. And and Robin Thicke, for that <laughs> yeah. matter. Yeah, and Robin Thicke. Yeah, wretched little shit. <laughs> and, and, and to rub it in, there would be like the guest appearance to that episode would be yeah. like it would be like guest postman, like oh it's postman Thicke from the village <laughs> next yeah. door. Oh, oh, hi, hi, villagers! Pat's on vacation, so I'll be your postal serviceman for this uh, for this week. Postman, say, why don't we have a village talent contest? <laughs> how appropriate! I'm actually quite good at singing. How, really? how, how unbelievable! As as luck would have it, and the prize money is like five grand. I'm of actually the, quite talented. Of all the people deserving of a little stop motion maquette being made of them, I would say Robin Thicke is way down at yeah. the bottom of that list. <laughs> I'm not sure he'd but, want it either, to be honest. He probably wouldn't. No. no. But it is like it is like there's a creative team who are like, we want to do new, edgy, current things. And I hate that be- creative team. <laughs> but they've been saddled with this old franchise which was created in like the eighties in like middle middle England. <laughs> and they're like, how do we make this relevant to a modern transatlantic market? How can and we that's... get Mrs. Goggins up on stage <laughs> like <laughs> fucking losing? How can shit? we get Mrs. Goggins fire eating? Now let's <laughs> <But> that... think. <laughs> think, producers, think. <laughs> but that's what it would be. It would be like it oh it was a it was a where did where did actually where did Postman Pat live? What was his it was Greendale, wasn't it? Was it? I can't, I can't remember. It was I'm Greendale, amazed you yeah. even know that. He goes, it was a quiet morning in Greendale when Lady Gaga's tour bus yeah. broke down. <laughs> you know, and then like... her, her whole album plays in every scene. Ooh, yeah. ooh, goo-goo-la. <laughs> or a Lady Gaga song, perhaps. Maybe. But you can yeah. picture it, can't you? The little stop-motion Lady Gaga yeah. going like, well, we've got the whole tour bus here. What are we going to do with it? <laughs> and Pat goes, maybe we could put on a show here. <laughs> and then they do it. Of course they do it. Why, do, do why it. don't we have the rock concert here in the field? The farmer can move his bales. And then the whole episode revolves around them removing the sheep and the bales from the field. And Lady yeah. Gaga steps in cow shit. And it's all really funny. It's all hilarious. Yeah. And then at the end, Norman sings, smack my bitch up. <laughs> And he actually wins us all over because yeah. fuck, that's rad. <laughs> I swear Elton John turned up in an episode of Bob the Builder. I swear oh, that happened. That, that, that's a possibility, certainly. Yeah. Uh, uh, so there you go. There you go. The, I, I don't know why I hate it. I'm, all, you know, I'm just like. It's the it's the authenticity behind it, perhaps. They can't all be hip. That's the problem. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's okay for a kid to be uncool. They don't have to be. You know, but then are you teaching children to be average? Teaching them to know their limitations. Is what <laughs> know their it. place, child. I'm just saying, like, I don't think the measure of being popular should be would Simon Cowell sign me for a record deal. That's the and thing. The that, thing is, that's the thing that every character would say at the end. They'd be like, "Wow, Norman, I didn't know you could sing like that." Simon Cowell will be signing you up before long. Yeah, and then that's how, would... and then that, the episode ends with them all patting him on the back and that. And that's the last line, and you think, yeah, Simon Cowell would give you a record deal. That seems awfully <laughs> suspicious. The end. The end. And, that, and that's how it would end, and, and we'd learn nothing. Yeah. Anyway. I've got a hate. Oh, oh hello. My hate is having no one to blame but yourself. <laughs> um, now, you recently cut your I hair. Recent, I, on an unrelated <laughs> note, I recently cut all my hair off. Um, and I've I've no one to blame for that but myself, unfortunately. Um, mm. And it happened last night. And as we were talking about just before the show, and we were talking about earlier this evening, one of our doors broke last mm. night, and we were unable to open it. The reason we were unable to open it is because I broke it, and then realised <laughs> that it was broken, um, and proceeded. Even though I knew the latch wouldn't work with the handle, and that's what happened. The latch basically the latch wouldn't uh, retract when I pulled the handle. And even though I knew that, and I'd done it myself, I shut the door. <laughs> now, and I thought to myself, I have no idea why I just did that, and I, I cannot blame—I literally cannot blame anyone else but myself for that. And that is awful. That's an mm. awful, awful feeling that I can't shift the blame. 
is that is I feel that becomes your problem the moment you own a house. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I sort of I, it was a toss up this hate between home ownership and having no one to blame but yourself. Mm. So it's sort of they do sort of merge into one because obviously when you own a house, any problem that occurs, you've got to sort it out. And yeah. it's great owning a house. Don't get me wrong. For any renters out there, I would heartily recommend investing in property. It's the one of the few growth markets of the last <laughs> no. of the last one hundred years. Don't jinx it. Um, but it's a pain in the ass whenever anything breaks, and I mean anything. A I light, a light well. bulb goes. A cupboard, a cupboard door goes. You can't call the landlord Explodes. to come and fix it. Just little things. You've got to sort it out. There is no and landlord. Also, you are the landlord. I feel I like sometimes something goes wrong in your house and you're like, not only can I not blame anyone else for it, but I probably did that as yeah. well. Like, like that's <laughs> I mean, the one, the one last I night, something. I was definitely, definitely, and I hate admitting I'm wrong, as you know. <laughs> it was definitely my fault. And I just went, oh, it's my fault that. I mean, I've got nowhere to go here. Yeah. I had a similar situation, actually. We woke up um, the other morning. Yeah, it was a couple of weeks ago, actually, now. And we looked up at our bedroom ceiling and well Ali did and she was like what's that and there was a little patch oh, no. of what looked like damp that's like not, a little that's, sort of that's not what you want and the problem was I had just been up in the loft laying new flooring up there <laughs> so I immediately was like that's my fault I don't yeah. know what I did I don't know how I did it but it must have been me because who the fuck else could it have been and, and there's only me to blame yeah, and luckily it's fine we don't have to worry there was a bit of heavy rain and it just happened to get through a patch of insulation that i've moved and it's all sorted out now and it was a totally freak thing but that moment that sinking feeling in your stomach where i looked up and i was just like there's no one else to blame because yeah. i'm the only one who lives here it's and, and out of well me and ali are the only ones who live here and out of ali and i i'm the only one who can get into the loft <laughs> yeah it's an awful feeling it's horrible I've also done it. I've I've basically been in a position, and this this moves away from home ownership slightly, and then it's about throwing up on a train. Um, <laughs> um, uh, I was uh, I was at a oh, no. I was yeah uh, oh yeah I was at a football match in Scunthorpe uh, pre Christmas oh, nice. two thousand and nineteen. Um, it was a simpler time. It was a simpler time, yeah, when we could mix with each other, um, touch each other, and I I. A friend and I had just been licking a, yeah, licking friend, a handrail. A friend and I, as, as, we, as we often did. Um, eating gum off the handrail. Um, <laughs> you got it. That's where the flavour is. That's where the flavour is. You get that real metallic tang. Um, Ooh, chef's kiss. So we're on our way back. Gillingham had won at Scunthorpe. And we're on our way Woo! back on the train. That's not important. That's not important. Well um, and a guy, a stranger, who I've not seen before or since, just <laughs> comes God. up to us with a full bottle of Jägermeister, puts it on our table on the train and went, there you go, lads, enjoy. What I the just fuck? got and then got off the train, and we were like, "Go ahead, lads. The stranger's offering you a treat." <laughs> yeah. So we came. Oh, wait. So we played some drinking games with the Jaeger, and I said, "Wait, to, go on. wait." With this like, miscellaneous I've, bottle of brown liquid, I've yeah. been put on blast for for much tamer things than this on this podcast. <laughs> All right, go on. No, go irresponsible on, go on then, activity. Go on no, no, pause, no. Pause the story. Come no, on. No, 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 no. We've talked about like me going out and helping random kids in the street when they came and knocked at the door in the middle of the night, and I've been put on blast for being irresponsible. And here's yeah. you drinking yeah. random liquor from a stranger on a train. Big I'm sorry. Yeah, it's like, big <laughs> you know, time. Uh, a guy knocks on Nick's door at like two in the morning and when Nick opens it, he's standing there like naked from the waist down and covered yeah. in blood. And he's like, I need some help washing down the back of a van. And I get straight and, out there and help. And Nick's already got like his marigolds and a sponge. And, and a he's pressure like, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, yeah let's do it. But I still say, <laughs> so what you're doing. Is... I'm, I accept I accept that. <laughs> in hindsight. Again, I, again, I have no one to blame but myself. <laughs> sure. Was okay. it? Was it sealed? Had it been opened? I can't remember. I was really. It doesn't matter, does it? Doesn't matter, really, does it? This so point? anyway, he puts, so anyway, he puts the bottle of Jaeger on the table and gets oh, off God. the train, and we were like, "Okie dokie, great, let's play a drinking game." <laughs> There's only a bit of white residue at the bottom of the bottle, anyway. So <laughs> how did you know it was Jaegermeister? <laughs> it, was in a, it was in a bottle that said Jaegermeister on it. It could have been turpentine. It could have been anything. Oh, it could have been, yeah. But it, oh, it, it probably, been. it probably wasn't. It probably was. Oh my. Anyway. God. Anyway. You drank that. So, uh, well, we and I said to everyone, right, because one time, me and John, and John will remember this. I was going to bring it up. Yeah, yeah. Fucking hell. John and I spent an evening, we drank a bottle of Jaeger. It's like just, we had, I, we had five strong lagers each. Yeah. And I'd, then we had a bottle of Jaeger. It was shared. a Friday night. Jesus it was Christ. a Friday night. I believe the year was 2009. Yeah. 
uh, and I was working Saturday mornings at the time. And Chris right. Ray, as as neither of us had girlfriends or anything going on in our lives at the time, correct, he would often come over to my family home, and we would sit and have and, and have have a few beers. Sure. And it was a Friday night, and we'd each had five 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 beers, five, five ales. Chris lagers. Yeah. And then I said, Chris Ray. Have, are you familiar with this uh, this uh, spirit, uh, this liqueur mm. called Jägermeister? Yeah. And I, and uh, I said, let me get some for you. <laughs> and, and, perhaps, I, I, perhaps I'll wet my whistle. <laughs> and Chris, and Rayman was like, and, Ray, and Chris was like, no need to dirty a glass. Let's just use the pint glasses we're already working on. Yeah. So Brilliant. Yeah. We just like sloshed a bit in, and the last oh, honestly, it, I feel ill. It's, just it's like about kind of, this. It's like kind of scene missing. The last thing I remember is 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 you having a having a sip and going, "Ooh, that's a touch." Yeah. <laughs> that's honestly like the last thing I remember. Thing is, that is that is, and I've had some absolute rip snorting hangovers in my time. That is the worst hangover I've ever had. I was in bed. Ooh, yes. I was in bed the next day until about five thirty in the afternoon. It was horrendous. I was meant to be working. That's the evening. And bear in mind, oh. I was a relatively young man at this point. Yeah, Relatively. and your liver was like twice the size it is now. Yeah. But I was, I was meant to, I was meant to be in work at nine, and mercifully, it snowed. Oh. Like it was a lifesaver because I, I, I could barely stand. It was, it was, anyway, utterly horrendous. The, the yeah. upshot of that evening in question is that I can no longer bear the smell or the taste of Jägermeister. I've, I've not had everyone. It since. Everyone's sort of got that drink that they can no longer have after they've had so much of it in one evening that they've been ill yeah. or whatever so but anyway yeah, for me jägermeister remains that drink and i said that to everyone i said like chaps it's very nice of this this stranger to give us a treat um <laughs> chaps chaps let's have a chat before we uh, indulge however wait can i just ask did it have was it like a milk bottle yeah it was, <laughs> it was <laughs> like it was like an old um um bongo carton with jägermeister <laughs> written in it on a sticky label yeah that's what it was yeah. it was like six capri sun sachets <laughs> yeah all of which were exactly. already pierced <laughs> And I thought that looked suspicious, but I let it go. Just go with it. Can't yeah, see inside yeah, it, but fuck it, it's yeah, opaque. Might as well. You're already in Scunthorpe. Um, Sorry, but please tell us tell us this story. So anyway, I said, lads, I don't want to be funny, because I have had Jaeger since that night, and I've immediately been ill. Imme oh like, God. immediately. Yeah. I had to run to the toilet. So I said, lads, I'm, I'm all for the drinking <laughs> games. I love drinking <laughs> games, me. Of course. But I'm warning you, if I have to have any of that, I will throw up. So yeah. they were like, all right, all right, fine, whatever. So anyway, right, we right. proceeded to play the drinking game, and I get through a few rounds unscathed. I can't remember nice. what the drinking game was, anyway. And then one round, obviously, I lose, so I have to have a shot of Jägermeister. Mm. And I said, this, I'm, I'm serious, <laughs> I am going to throw up if I have this. <laughs> so anyway, they were like, yeah, whatever, drink it. So I drank it, and I tried my best, but it went all over the train floor. Oh, what? Yeah. So basically, you just chugged this one shot of Jaeger yeah. and boom, yeah, yeah. it all came straight out. Yeah, like imme Fine. again, immediately. Wow. And it was just, and again, there, I tried to blame them. <laughs> I tried to say, that's your fault. That's your fault that's happened. <laughs> I told you this would happen. But I had nowhere, like, I've now, looking back on it, it was probably my fault, wasn't it? I mean, yeah, probably. I've got, no one to blame. Yeah. I've got no one to blame but myself. And that's an awful position to be in. It is, you're right. I'm just trying to picture like everything you've just said unedited, but you're in like the dock, and you're trying to explain that to a judge. Yeah, like that. That's. I mean, I'm just it's, picturing it's not, that. It's now. not that plausible as a story, but it did. But it, it, it's a hundred percent the truth. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a. I'm honestly trying to think of a scenario in which I really just balls it up like that that much. Yeah. I mean, I mean that's, that's, like, I... that's not even that's not even the first time I've done something like that. But well, let's not talk no. about that. Well, no, okay. I can th no, no. Let's not let's not bring those up now. That's, I mean, that's, I, a, I, that's I, a good enough throw up on a train story for now. Yeah, mm. I mean, there's others. There's, it's a rich vein to kind of tap into. I mean, I I drilled into a gas pipe, and that was probably that's that was that was one, one of the that stupidest. was no one to blame but yourself. But you had a landlord then. Yes. No, and that was one of the yeah. stupidest things I've ever done. Uh, I don't think I've done anything drastically stupid to the house i now well the bank owns it but like yeah. the house i technically own i don't think i've ruined anything yet it's just oh, it's being in that position always time, it's though. being in that position personally or professionally and just thinking fuck it's yeah. just like oh no 
there's that sinking feeling when you suddenly realize like your brain sort of rushes through all the people you might be able to blame and they're all dead ends and you suddenly realize oh it's me isn't it this is me this is my one this one's mine ah, <laughs> yeah Mick, you've you, you've got to you've got to have a, a big screw up you could share with the team. We're all we're all friends here. Oh, I don't think I don't think anyone um, listens to this anyway. So, <laughs> I mean, I mean, obviously, I've mentioned the 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 ceiling in the house. That's probably the closest thing in a house that I think I've done or in my house. But I mean, I I've injured myself a decent amount, and and mm. the frustrating thing, like I I relive the time that I fell off my mountain board and dislocated my shoulder. Nice, quite often. And Ooh. and what I what I relive is 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 standing at the top of that hill before I descended on the board, knowing as I did that I'm really bad at being on a mountain board. I knew yeah. I was bad at it. I knew and but I had this friend who was but I can't blame him. Now my friend was saying you could do it, and I thought, yeah, I could do this, and I couldn't do it at all. And I fell <laughs> off and I smashed my arm to bits. And like I I could have just not fucking done that and now like when it gets cold my shoulder seizes up every time and i'll probably be like that for the rest of my life and because all because i did that this stupid thing that that friend i'm mm. guessing he's the kind of person who could have jumped on that mounting board and somehow made his way to the bottom of a hill he did it pretty badass yeah he did, he did it, it yeah. first and and and, and, to, and to, in my defense i did go i i, oh, I can't do that oh no that's too steep i can't do that he was like, no, you can, mate. You can do it. I believe in you. Oh, well, I think you've reasonable cause to blame him. Maybe I do. Maybe that's not me. I do remember there was a time when I jumped off the roof of a boat. And I think I've talked about it before. Because I, I hate... I, re I, hate I recall it. this story, yes. Yeah, I hate heights at the best of times. Like, I really hate heights. And jumping and being in the air long enough to regret every moment <laughs> up to that point like and then and then just like face planting horrendously into the surface of the ocean like it was it's, yeah i did i did that and i did a jump off a high dive in oslo and i mm. thought I, I was i was falling long enough to think uh oh, oh. It, was just, it was just like oh no <laughs> yeah, the human, the like, human like not, not like in a flash just to actively think oh shit not <laughs> yeah. the time and, yeah. that, and that's a sign of how long you're falling because Nobody should fall long enough where you can form a cohesive thought in your yeah. head. Yeah. Which is why I like, there's part of me which would, I'd love to do a skydive. I'd love to. Do I'm never going to do a skydive. Mm. I would do a skydive. I'm not going to ever. I'd love to do um, hang gliding. You could not at gunpoint get me to do a bungee jump. <laughs> <laughs> but why, why is that ba based on the facts available? Well, if I jump out of a plane, the ground is a far away fictional concept which mm. i don't have to fit inside my brain whereas if i jump off a bridge the ground seems very very real in a way if but that makes sense but the ground's there no matter how far you fall well i mean that's that's maybe a question for any philosophers listening mm. but like <laughs> at, what, jump... at what point does the ground become a prospect yeah, that's true yeah like if i'm jumping out of a plane i've got to i've got to beat the gogs of the air to get to the ground whereas like if i'm jumping off a bridge i feel like i'm wrestling with the god of the earth and he he's a he's a cruel fucker and he's not gonna let go like, i feel like got... on, a, on a on a less poetic level <laughs> thank you was, thank you that yeah. was delightful what you just mm. weaved there i think it's a question of time like in a bungee jump if something goes wrong you're dead whereas in a parachute if something goes wrong there's either other people to grab onto and just drag them down with you. So, you know, there's that. Or you've got your, your dummy your secondary shoot or whatever it is to, to deploy. There's enough time to go, oh, fuck, and then come up with potentially a solution. Or maybe not. Sure. Can, or maybe what not, solution or maybe could not. you come up with if your parachute doesn't deploy? Well, it happened to James Bond once. Uh, and he got out of it, didn't he? And yes, he's with a lady. And he got with a chick in the air. <laughs> and he did all sorts of shit with her on the way down before he deployed. Yeah. No, The point is, he jumped onto a minion or whatever and he pulled his chute and he, like, sailed down with him. My point is, is there's, there's regardless of how irrelevant it might be, and, and still you might die, there's a sense of time to solve the problem is what I'm getting at. No, I, I don't know. <laughs> there was, the thing is, I, I know statistically that, like, thousands of people jump out of planes every year and do parachute jumps and that's wonderful and they, and it's fine wonderful. and they land and it's great and all is well but 
I and I know statistically doing anything stupid like that is fine and it's exciting and it's exhilarating and you feel alive. I mean, I guess I I don't want to be the statistically like I don't want to be that one in a million person who jumps and the parachute doesn't open. Yeah, because that means I've got three minutes to make my peace with <laughs> with. <laughs> <laughs> with with existence <laughs> before i have a hell of a reckoning not, of a cloud a nice field thought, having, having you have three minutes to make your peace with eternity mm. i don't want to be in that position no. because when i'm falling out of the plane i'm like i really only have myself to blame yeah. like no one else no, one's, like, made no, one's, me no one's made you do that i mean chris i know you fucked up a door today and i know yes. you're upset about that but well i mean we, 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 we can fix it so it's it's fine when I, heard, when I heard, plane. when I heard that you and Liz had had some door issues, mm. my immediate thought was that you were responsible in some way. Well, I you, was. Yeah, you have you record. Had, well, I'm, ho I'm have, holding now. Yeah. I'm holding now in front of the camera the part of the door that I've ripped out of the frame. Um, Looks great. Which, uh, for the benefit of the listener, Chris Ray is holding an entire door yeah. in front of him right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm holding the I'm holding the latch mechanism in my hand. Which is what yes. we pulled out the door. That's the bit that's broken. So we've got to buy a new one of those, essentially. But, but the, like, well, you, do, you do have history with getting mm. locked in oh, yeah. places. Yes, well, yeah. I've twice locked myself in a toilet in yes. a house. Uh, twice? Two different houses. Twice, yeah. Uh, since I've been, let's say, 25. And we could even one say, time with, we, we could one even time say 28. Um, so I locked myself in my mum's toilet... <laughs> um, for four to five hours four to five. Um, and they, they were at the NEC in Birmingham for an event and I locked myself in that toilet and I really <laughs> and I thought I sat there and I thought well there's no there's nothing in the oven everything's fine the dog can go out the doors open so the dog can go out and criminals could get in cool. um, so I thought well I'll just wait it out so I, sl <laughs> I, had a, I had a sleep so that was fine the, sec the second time was in the house I used to live in, and I locked me and Daisy in the toilet. Yes. And I was supposed to be one. getting on a bus to go to London about two hours afterwards. I popped home for lunch to sort Daisy out, and then I was going to London for work two hours later. And I shut the <laughs> toilet door. I was like, yeah, I'm stuck here. <laughs> so I, eventually I sort of jimmied it open with a credit card, I think. Okay. Um, and I did get on my, on my coach, but we were in there for a oh, good awesome. hour and a half. Cool. Um, so yeah, and again, I've got no one to blame there but myself. Arguably, it's better than being locked on the other side of the toilet door. That's true. Well, where do you poop? Oh, well, I no, I didn't have two toilets in the house, so yeah, I would have been, I would have been screwed. Yeah. Hypothetical no, question, guys. Like yeah. Chris, Chris likes to do these, but I'm going to do one this time. Okay, okay. Your your toilet is inaccessible due to a locking incident. Mm, you now, yeah. but you are desperate to shit. Sure. Yeah. Where where do you think is the best place to shit in your house? I, joking aside, I have thought about this. <laughs> I I've I've got an answer ready for this actually. John, yeah, you, I, you go you go first, John. Okay, my answer is, uh, I run to the podcast studio. Okay. <laughs> uh, where we have a one piece plastic IKEA bin. Okay. <laughs> And I empty that bin into a more classic waste paper basket, which is right. in the study. So then it's like, dump that out. So now you've got a perfectly smooth plastic container. Yeah, the clock is ticking, but yeah. The okay. clock is ticking. Well, I mean... This does sound like a lot of lot of effort whilst you need a They're bin. not... As for crow flies, they're not that far away from each other. Okay, I'll allow it. And, you know, I reckon I can be disrobing while I'm running. <laughs> you know, I, I reckon I can. I reckon that's in my power. Uh, and then then the world's your oyster, really. Mm. I mean, where do, you, where do you want to shit? You could do yeah. it, do it let's wherever. Make this, let's turn this into a, pl a positive. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm like, the moment you've got that bin, I'd be like, I'd be checking emails. I'd be, you know, yeah, you know, taking just phone calls. Sharting. You know. Okay, what about you, Chris? It's not really a problem. Bag for life. <laughs> best solution <laughs> that's just what tesco wants to hear a bag for life is not as is not as kind of like air but then i can put it out, but then i can put it outside for who well, no for like <laughs> for like later you know for later when I'll you put it in the weenie it bin or something 
put it in a wheelie bin, yeah. Bag probably not life. use the... That doesn't require too much life. thought. There's always one around. See, except, first... except we keep the bag, bag for life in the lean-to, and that door was the one that broke last night, so then, oh, I, then I'd be screwed. Maybe okay, fine. what's your backup plan? What if, like, yeah. you are... You, you're turtlenecking. Yeah. <laughs> don't, this be, is don't, like be, a... don't be gross, John. Okay, you're you're what uh, you're five p you're five p fifty ping it. <laughs> that, that's that's better. That's <laughs> definitely better. You've scrabbled for plan A, which is to get into the get into the little lean to get your bag for life. Yeah. that's failed you. Right. This is not a time for. Planning. Why do I need a, Why do I need a backup plan for my backup plan? Because your backup your backup plan has failed you. But you're still gonna... theoretically, all the doors could fail me, and then I'd have no option just to go where I stand. Yeah, but. Yeah, but like only one door has a lock on it. You, 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 Chris, you're the one who painted a well, picture where I mean, the door I mean, locked you away from your bag for life. Pitfalls that there are of not owning your house. I own this house. I could go where right. I want. Great. Theoret well, you know, theoretically, I think you have a powerful advantage, Chris, with regards to John and I, because you can blame it on the dog. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and they're much smellier than mine. <laughs> Because that plays my... into my solution, which would have just been I'd have shot in the cat litter. Yeah, that's a yeah. good option. Yeah, I think I'd, yeah, have to no, squat, a... I'd have to squat under the stairs somehow. It's quite, it's quite uh, cramped in there, but I, I could do it. I think, yeah, I think that's a good. I think that'll probably be my backup. Like, yeah. kind of. What if though? <laughs> there are poo bags. And... Actually, there are poo bags. There are poo bags in the in the dog cupboard. Go, okay, one of here's my thing. This is the question is it's not a time for planning, it's not a time for highfalutin thinking. This is emergency response. Think about the room in your house where you spend the majority of your time. Okay. Nowadays. For me okay. it's the office which I'm currently in. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Well I'm yeah, if I, it, I'm it, in I'm in that room right now, yeah. If yeah. it happens, I mean we're talking a code brown. <laughs> that moment happens. You have you can't travel. Okay, it's just this we're not, room. We're not talking to. We're not talking about moving to another room. You have enough time to grab something. Okay. Well, I'm. I'm what, yeah, what right, I'm it? looking. I'm looking at it now. We have um, like a like a half square sized ottoman. <laughs> so I think that would be my best option. I'm not that fond of it. <laughs> Wait. Just no, I, I do. No, I do like it. It's useful. But like a bar, does it open? A, like, yeah, it's got a lid. Okay. Oh, you. That I sounds buy, quite I comfy. Could, I could. I could buy another one. Yeah, I mean, you could. It's quite an expensive choice. No, you can get them no. from Wilkinsons for like six quid. Hmm. Um. You pay more see, than that right at Victoria. You see, right now, if I look around the room, I can see I've got about the aforementioned waste paper basket, which is more like a mesh. Yeah. And I don't. I don't think that's. I don't think that's grand. Um. I have a shredder. <laughs> I have, that sounds risky. That sounds that sounds risky. I have a paper shredder. I reckon if I upended it, I reckon there's just enough time. Yeah. So tip all the paper out of it. Or don't. Or don't. That could be like a handy nest yeah, to that catch would your toddler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've is, got if... um I've got a little chest of drawers here. And I reckon <laughs> I could just pull out a drawer at the right height and squat into that. <laughs> I'm I'm concerned that the the class of this podcast is going downhill. <laughs> um, others, have to others start with some scandals to, in order to yeah, lose. Them. Others may disagree. I mean, I think we've, I think we've answered the question, so I think we can move on if you want. I think it's probably best that we do. If it's, bo if it's bothering you, I understand. <laughs> well, tell you what, let's let's do some um, some rapid fire love spend to kind of like rinse, rinse oh, the okay. palate. Okay. Bam, bam, bam. Love, love, love. Okay, here we go. Uh, I guess I should lead the way. Um, my love is that I'm a 35-year-old man and I have recently uh, added a unicycle into my life. Brilliant. Brilliant. I don't, think that, I don't think there's anything more I need to say. Despite the fact that I did mention earlier that I fell off a mountain board and dislocated my shoulder. I... And how, how many wheels does a mountain board have? Four, John. Okay. <laughs> Four large, very stable wheels. And this one's got one. And here's the thing. I chose this macabre device on the basis that I thought... I can't really hurt myself on that. That's what I, I would thought. I would argue the opposite. <laughs> well, since trying it out, I have learned that it is possible to hurt oneself yes. on on the unicycle. So, so wh while while I can't legally stop you 
from riding a <laughs> unicycle. I would ask that if you find yourself falling, could you aim to land on the left side of your body? <laughs> sure, sure, I'll you make know, sure uh, for you, yeah. I'm just saying, that's not the money maker. Like, we... <laughs> We need your hand, your right hand working. You can you can basically walk along however you want as long as your right hand's okay. That's your right hand. I put the wrong hand out then. Fuck the other limbs. Just focus the, on the right and keep that okay. How 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 is the unicycling going? By the to way, to be fair, I haven't tried as much on it as I would have liked. But also, to be fair, the little that I have, um, it uh, is. It, I think I'm doing quite well. I think I'm. I, I think I, I think I would be worse than useless on a unicycle. <laughs> What's challenging is that you can't ever, there's no relaxing. You can't ever just go, you know, you're constantly moving back and forth to keep yourself up. Yeah. I haven't yet successfully what, done that and let go of anything. I haven't what yet muscle do you use the most on a unicycle? Your ass. Yeah, I was going to yeah, say, is it, it your, is ass? your ass? Yeah. I think it is your ass. Like, yeah. I, I'm very conscious of my, my, my buttocks and my anus yeah. and, my, and the tops of my thighs where they connect to my ass. All of that area is very tense all yeah. the time. You need a strong like core, a I would imagine. Yeah. Where, where, where are you? Uh, where are you uh, practicing your art um, these days? If it's nice out, then I'm doing it like against a wall outside in the garden. Are you doing it on your new patio, which you you built? Yeah, yourself? not the not the big patio, but the smaller patio. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Or uh, the hall, where, <laughs> where I can hold on to a banister, kind of thing. Okay, okay. So yeah. you're like, you know, just making tea, you know, kind yeah. of boiling a kettle. Yeah, a lot of hot uh, liquids involved. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you got it. Otherwise, there's no risk involved. That's the thing. I need steaks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's very much like a, a Dark Knight Rises scenario where, you know, you're not going to learn unless you do away with the safety net. Like exactly, you've gotta, John. Got to just go for it, yeah. Yeah, you're just like that friend that told me to go down that hill. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh yeah. Hmm. The thing is, is that I under I, I acknowledge that this is something of a bad idea, but I still I, I'm still proud of myself that I'm giving it a shot. I guess that's why my love. That's my love. Okay. <laughs> I just I'm I'm amazed that you keep inviting new and elaborate ways of hurting yourself in, in into your life. Really. Yeah. I'll keep you updated. Great. Yeah. Or you'll you know we'll hear or, from or, the yeah, I suppose. We'll hear from Ali at some point. <laughs> I've got a love. Go on. I love the life and times of David Lynch. Oh. Oh. That sounds very broad. Even though, even though I find mo most of his work too terrifying to watch. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, and this is such a bizarre thing because I haven't, I haven't watched it, but I've recently become quite fascinated by, uh, uh, Twin Peaks. Oh yeah, and I've watched um, I've watched the original. I haven't watched uh, the uh, the Return, which was the um, well the the new series he did uh, kind of twenty five years later. Uh, but I've been listening to some people talk about it. I've been kind of um, watching a few videos about it, and it is simultaneously fascinating and utterly terrifying to me in equal measure <laughs> like there are things that scare me and there's obvious kind of like horror tropes like oh he's a he's a here's a little girl but she's got like a spooky ghost yeah. face that's the worst that's the worst little girl ghosts are the worst. It's scarier than that yeah but i find little girl ghosts a little boring whereas like oh, i don't know david lynch it seems to occupy some kind of like shadow space in the human brain, which is just so terrifying to me. Like, there isn't. Again, this isn't like a spoiler because the context is is completely bizarre. Like, you wouldn't. I barely have any idea what's going on because I haven't watched the series. But there is a scene in which it's all set in. It's all filmed in black and white. And it's set back in the fifties. And there's a scene in <laughs> there's a scene in which there are like uh there's like a couple driving down a road somewhere in like the American desert. And they stop because there's like a guy standing in the road and it's all black and white and the lighting is almost like <clears throat> non existent. Okay. And it's you can barely see a thing. And they stop because there's a guy in the road, and this guy slowly you just see a shape of him and he slowly kind of walks to the driver's window 
and he leans down and it's just like this kind of bearded man but his face is all just kind of covered in like smudged dirt and everything oh no and there's like this weird kind of like radio crackle kind of going on and he just leans down and just goes like got a light <laughs> got a light and just keeps like repeating like kind of got a light and it's just something so kind of like and again, you're describing like, well, it's just a dirty man asking for a light and holding a cigarette. Or is it? But there's something so kind of like surreal about it mm. that it, it's it's kind of terrifying and it's all in the context of it. And it's like dream logic. Mm. It's like it's like in a dream where you can be like, this kitchen is terrifying. Yeah. And and then you wake up and you go like, oh. I had a nightmare, and it, it was like a really scary kitchen. And you go like, well, "What was scary about it?" Well, I don't know. I can't. I, now I'm awake. I can't really describe it. Just it, was but... okay. Didn't have, yeah, a, didn't have and... a cheese grater. <laughs> but yeah, but it's That'd be a good but, yeah. it'd be little little things like that. But yeah, in, in a dream, the absence of a of a cheese grater could be absolutely terrifying. Could be, <laughs> could, be could be like uh, just just maddening. Um, so yeah, so I've just been watching like a ton of like. Um, behind the scenes stuff with david lynch and he's he's just he's just such a a weird and fascinating guy like and um and the way he talks and just like his mannerisms like i think he's insane <laughs> and a genius at the same time like it's kind of amazing as they so often are see I, like everything he, yeah i don't do well with this kind of thing this kind i'm sure david lynch is a perfectly lovely gentleman but his but his genre terrifies me <laughs> It terrifies me. Like, it gives me a genuine problem. Like, I think the stuff he's made might scare me more than any other person on the planet. There you go. I do think, I do think creators like this are really interesting because, like, being somewhat creative myself, I, I, I always operate on a sort of, like, there's a logic to the things I come up with. But what's so terrifying and remarkable about these sorts of creatives is that they almost deliberately step away from logic and they and but they're able to create something that due to its lack of logic is terrifying because of it and as yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know how you begin to come up with something like that it's just so it's so alien and and the reason that you and i and anyone who enjoys this stuff like finds it so entertaining and alien is because it feels non-human and yet a human came up with it somehow so how how does that work there's an amazing is it it's interesting you're making Inter in interesting you mentioned kind of like uh talking about like being creative and getting like a glimpse behind like the processes that go into making it but i was watching like there's a few clips on youtube of like the behind the scenes filming of some of these scenes and like um there's this great moment where and you just get like a little glimpse into his head and how his brain works because like he's in the director's chair and the like behind the scenes kind of camera guy is filming him in the director's chair and he goes like um uh dennis can i can i talk to you like because that's kind of like how how he how he speaks and he brings over this guy and they've got like this whole set which they've built of like a radio station in like the 1950s and he goes like and he just like, brings this guy over and he's like and there's just like, a moment of silence he's just kind of standing there and he goes i grew up in the desert so, oh, okay david yeah he goes it's pitch black couldn't see a thing he's like do you, do you want me to darken the set david he's like yes you could have just said that yeah that would have huh. been enough huh. so we uh, bring on like a ton of painters to just come and like darken the set and yeah wow. he's just a fascinating guy that's my love there you go that's cool. the world is richer for him indeed my love is along then. the same lines a, sp a special glass a special glass <laughs> that is along special the same lines. it is along the same lines i thought um so i go to a lot of pubs or i used to um <laughs> before the, and before i the i times. always admire uh when a brand or a pub has a different glass so, so like for example a Carl carlsberg wow well, a vase glass a few years ago i was like oh that's very interesting yeah. Um, and there's different pubs you go to and you think, bloody hell, that's a really, really nice glass. But the mm. finest glass, and I would urge our listeners to look this up while I'm talking about it, because it's an audio-visual medium, is this glass from Castile, which is a Belgian okay. uh, brand. It's spelled K-A-S-T-E-E-L. And it's that probably the amazing. nicest glass I've ever had a beer out of. And, I sh and 
if you look at the bottom of the stem... Oh, there's a castle ooh, there. It's like a manor house built into the stem. Well, oh, that, is very, the that is very and classy. It's a yeah. really lovely glass. So I had a beer out of that in Belgium when I went to visit our friend James Eastwood. Oh, James um, and Eastwood, he yeah. bought it for me as a gift uh, when he got back from Belgium, which is very nice of him. And I caked this glass and I have beer and what have you out of it at Christmas. And I only drink out of it at Christmas because it's my special glass. <laughs> and I enjoy having that choice of glass in my life. That I can, that it... I can have a different glass for a different occasion. Mm. Does it taste better? I, I think so. In, this has got a, it's got a gold rim on it as well, this glass. Ooh. Ooh. There you go. I'm always amazed when you go into a pub and you ask for like, I don't know, you ask for a Peroni or whatever, and they serve it in a Peroni glass. Yeah. And, but but get, then you look you... around and, you, and just to see if they just have Peroni glasses across the board, and they don't. They deliberately put no. Peroni in a Peroni glass, and then they put like Carlsberg in a Carlsberg glass, and, you know, whatever else in a whatever I like, glass. I like that you like... think that's a special trait. Yeah. That's what they're supposed to do. Well, here's the thing. If I was running the pub, right, I would be so barely organized that the chance of having a clean glass alone would be a treat, right? Yeah. Let alone the fact that the brand matched what they were fucking ordering. Yeah, I... That's remarkable to me. Yeah, you save us what they're supposed to do, but I'd be like, well, did you did you serve it without spitting in it? That's basically <laughs> like the lowest bar Never. I'm aiming for. The thing is, um, Carlsberg, uh, Carlsberg, Carl Ling tastes like piss but sure. yes but it, the glass of the carling has a really cool thing where it, they've got a little divot at the bottom so when you drink right. carling you're supposed to hold it at the bottom and it stops your beer getting warm because you hold it around the glass what? little things like that i just enjoy that the because... i enjoy the aesthetic of a beer glass gen generally you... and i enjoy the fact that i can have a, a nice glass for a nice occasion are you saying a carling tastes better when drunk no. out of a carling glass <laughs> no i think carling's horrible yeah i think carling is horrible i think carling is the, yeah, it's is basically the worst brown lager. water yeah but i think that's just an example but you can go to a lot of craft beer places and they've got their own glasses and you can look at the glass and think that's really nice looking glass like even a foster's glass i think looks quite nice so i just enjoy the aesthetic around that i just find it kind of nice that you know even in that state where you're just kind of you know, blocking out reality, and you know, you're just you're just drinking to to make the night disappear. <laughs> sure, I, I find sure. it I find it wonderful that you can find a um, a degree of artistry. Yeah, kind of like in the gutter. You've got to you've got to find that's you've got to I... find beauty where it's available. Oh, mm. that's nice. Yeah, that's that's how many, nice. you can take that. How many glasses have you? How many glasses have you stolen from? Parts? That's a good question. That was my what I was about to ask you. Probably quite a few. Really? Probably quite a few. I, I'm quite happy to say none. Really? Where do you uh, where do you put them? Yeah. Well, I've not stolen that many. <laughs> I, re I think at the moment I've got in my cupboard I've got two glasses that I stole. Okay. That's and that all. that's all. And the one, and one of them was like a vase. I don't know why I nicked it. Um, this is you, another this is another Chris Ray monologue that sounds like it's coming from the dock of a uh, of a yeah, law court. Yeah. yeah. It's been a bit of a trend recently. I mean like do, <laughs> yeah. do you keep all your um stolen Colgate in, in uh, a We're out we're out we could do with a with a new delivery from Colgate actually because we're running out of toothpaste. I don't want to get into that again. But no, I, I only steal where I think it will benefit me. <laughs> <laughs> Does that make does that, is, does that make you feel better, John? Hundred percent of the time. Does that make you feel better? <laughs> what if I really want a thing? Yeah, yeah well, exactly. Is stealing okay? Um, this is what people don't understand. I feel. I'm gonna say yes, as long no, just yes. I think. Let's just say yes. Yes. I think. Bear, yes. Bearing in mind that people can't go to pubs anymore, so there's no there's no fear of anyone replicating your crimes. Mm. But what are your top tips for sneaking oh, I've, a, I've, a pint I've, glass out of a pub? I put it under my jacket. I don't think that's a secret. Um, that's classic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I yeah, I just sort of just sort of walk out normally. I reckon they probably they probably see you doing. I have yeah, I, just, I have been caught. Just let him. Have I've been it. caught. Uh, uh, well, probably a couple of times. I think I've gotten away with it more than I've not. I guess cool. they only search you on the way in, yeah. don't they? You know, at really high-end establishments. In my defence, I only steal a glass if I really like it. Yeah, that's definitely a defence. I think that's a good no, defence. No question. I only steal things that I really want. And they don't. I do like the idea. The thing is, I, I got like said, I'm, I'm drinking out of this, sorry, I'm drinking out of this glass now. Ooh, this yeah. one here. It's a sort of a long-stemmed half-pint glass for the listener. 
That, that came classy. free with my beer delivery. Oh, Ooh. shit. So they, there's loads of glasses knocking around. Do you resent it in some way because you didn't steal it? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. But it looks cool. It won't be I quite, I've, it's nice to drink out of. I do, I do just find it interesting that the, you know, this is a show in which we moan and we're very just kind of grumpy, curmudgeonly kind of people. Mm. And we've we've kind of maintained this illusion that deep down we're actually quite nice people over the course of 77 episodes. And I feel we're slowly peeling back that illusion. Mm. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised you've never nicked a glass. No, I haven't. No, I haven't. Actually. Have you not? Glass. Bloody hell. No. You've not lived. It's just you. Maybe, maybe we haven't. I've never tasted the dizzy highs. Have you ever, have you ever of... nicked anything? Uh... Uh... Thing is, I don't think me stealing a glass from a pub's going to send it under. What this podcast? Well, either or the pub. <laughs> I guess I must have done, but I really can't think. I, re- of I reckon. I reckon you've 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 half inch something. I, must, I mean, I must have done because no one's no one's that pure. But I just I just honestly, yeah, I honestly can't bring anything to mind yeah. right now. Well, I stole get... a Milky Bar when I was a little kid. But <laughs> oh my goodness! By accident. Jesus oh my Christ! Goodness. I am so sorry. I'm lowered the tone. I uh, yeah no. I used to do it a fair amount at uni. I've not. And the glasses <laughs> in the cupboard now. I've had for a number of years now. I don't. I don't do it anymore. You used to do it just to you know kind of feel alive. You know, yeah. it was never about the glass. It was just about to feel the, something. Yeah. At this I know point. it was. It was, it was really about the glass. Get, I really it? really wanted it. Okay. It's well, never the thing is, like, when, when Chris Ray admits to stealing, I, that's, you know, that's pretty much part of the course. But when Nick does it, it just sours the uh, yeah. sours. I think you mood. sort of expect it from someone who looks like me. Yeah, yeah, it's certainly now. Yeah. You know, now the, 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 the missing head. Mitchell. I've got that look uh, now. Yeah. Anyhow, anyhow. Anyhow. Anyhow, bringing, you know, en- enough talk of crime. Mm. <laughs> Let's talk about blind, blind hatred. Yes. Um, what do we think won this episode? Was it hate or love? Um, um, I'm gonna say love. Ooh, controversial. Um, not really. I'm gonna say hate. Yes, this makes it exciting. It's oh, all down to the power. Ooh. Um, I'm gonna say love. Oh, for oh. fuck's sake! <laughs> I'm sorry. What can I say? I mean, you know. I think we had some good thoughts and, and emotions and reminiscences. Yeah, we all kind of grew a bit, you know. We did. So, and we learned something about Chris Ray stealing glasses. Yeah. Besides, the world is grim enough as it is right now. You know, maybe, maybe we all need, need a little susan of hope. A little, you know? Ooh, a little, ooh, a little, ooh, ooh, chef's ooh, a little, kiss. Ooh, a little, ooh. Hey, and look, and if you're feeling disappointed, you know, when we hang up, to, you know, when we stop recording... You can just go and lie on a bed of skull and Colgate tubes and, <laughs> you know, drink beer from your your sullied, you know, illicit glass, you know, and, and just be quite happy with your sinful lot in life. The worst thing, the worst thing is that I don't actually drink out of either of those glasses, so it's pointless me nicking them. Anyway, yeah. but that, maybe I did maybe I did years ago when I nicked them. Before I met Liz, now I'm a changed man, probably. Now you're a good boy. I'm a good, I'm a good honest criminal now. Youngling. Yeah. Liam the Shades. <laughs>